Taylor's keen to get underway. Don't know what he's talking about. I'm pretty sure it's something new. Um, if you follow him on Twitter, he's been teasing and mentioning it over the last couple of months. It's been ready for a couple of weeks, I'm, I'm led to believe, and uh, this is the, the first reveal of it. So thanks, Taylor, for keeping a lid on that. Uh, so thanks for having me to uh, the first Laracon Australia. It was quite the journey to get here, I will say. Um, but it's been fun. Uh, it's been fun visiting a new uh, uh, country, I guess whole continent. And, um, you know, I'm glad to see such a nice turnout for the first Laracon. The first Laracon in the U.S. was only about 90 people, so it was a really small little event. And, um, you know, so it's really cool to see uh, so many people came out. So um, at Laracon U.S., of course, probably many of you know, I um, introduced Laravel Nova, which David Hemphill and I built and was designed by um, Steve Shoger, who spoke yesterday, uh, which was an admin panel for Laravel. Has anyone used Nova? All right, quite a few hands. Uh, so hope you like that. Um, we spent quite a bit of time trying to get that right. And then uh, at Laracon EU, just um, in August, I, thank you. I um, um, demoed some of the Laravel 5.7 features that were coming out um, in, in Laravel 5.7 release um, a week or two after that. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That was features such as like email verification and um, some other uh, little features. Let me restart my screen recording because I got a little jacked up. I uh, plugged in my cable. Um, and today I wanted to um, demo something new that Muhammad and I have been working on, um, actually, uh, which is Laravel Telescope, um, which is a new, good grief, um, kind of a new family member to the Laravel ecosystem. And so I like to think of Telescope as sort of a Laravel application debugging assistant. So you may have used other tools like this in the past, um, such as like a debug bar or something like that. Uh, Telescope works a little bit differently. And um, to show it to you, I just want to hop right in and um, demo the whole application. So this is a fresh Laravel project. Um, I've got Telescope installed here in my um, Composer JSON. Um, right down here, and it's pretty much ready to go. And so how I pull up Telescope is I actually just go to Telescope here in my browser. And uh, you get something that kind of looks like this. And it shows me the requests that have come in and a lot of other information that we'll kind of dig through as we go through the presentation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and reseed this database just so it's fresh. Um, and kind of start working down through this code base. So if I hop into my routes file, I've kind of got a list of things I want to demo for you in Telescope. And I'll try to leave some time for Q&A um, since this is, my, this is my first time in Australia. So try to get through this so we have um, some time for questions. All right, so of course we already saw like if I hit um, any URL in this application that it shows up here. And I can jump into this request and get some information about it. Um, I can look at, of course, the request payload. So if this was like a post request and it had incoming input, I could view it here. I can, of course, um, inspect the headers that came in through the request, the session variables, and the response, which in this case was an HTML response. If this was a JSON response, the JSON would be um, available here to kind of inspect. All right, so it gives you a nice little overview of kind of what happened during the request and what was contained in the request. I'm gonna go ahead and log into this application. All right, and now that I'm authenticated, let's go back to the request and take a look at one of these. We also get information about the authenticated user here in the middle. Um, so we can see um, their email address and user ID and, and name, just in case we need to get in touch with them for whatever reason. Um, so we, we get that authenticated user information on any of these tabs over here, so we can know exactly who triggered this action. All right. Um, yeah, so this is the request overview page. And what's really cool is if we come down here to the bottom, we can actually see other things that happened during this request. So every database query and how many queries, how long they took during this request, and uh, dig into those, which I'll show you here in a minute. 
All right, so that's kind of the basic, most simple uh, request overview screen in um, Telescope. And one thing I want to show you before I leave here, there's two icons here at the top, or two buttons. Um, so with both of these disabled, if I hit this route again, and we stay here, you can see it says load new entries there at the top of that table. So I have to click this to load the new entry, um, just so you don't lose your place in the table. Um, if you don't want it to behave that way and you sort of want it to just kind of automatically refresh, you can enable that refresh button up there. And then um, if I make requests, they're just automatically showing up um, in the table. I don't have to refresh. So that's pretty handy, especially if you're inspecting uh, like jobs or something like that. All right, so let's jump into another tab. Um, commands, this is where we're gonna see any artisan commands that we've run on this application and their exit code. So for example, if I come in and run um, like artisan inspire or whatever, um, it shows up here the command and uh, the exit code. We can also dig into this and see the arguments and options, which in this case, there's not really anything interesting, but you can inspect what options were passed to that command and its exit code. All right, so that's handy for kind of keeping tabs on the commands and their exits and what you've run. Um, one thing I also really like is it gives you some scheduling information. So for example, if you're running database backups, like I've configured for this little dummy application and they're running like nightly, you can inspect their output and kind of what happened uh, on this screen. So let's go ahead and do an artisan schedule run. And uh, we can see here that Artisan Inspire and uh, my job called Backup Database ran. So if I jump in, let's take a look at my console kernel so we can see kind of what was defined in there. So if I go into my console kernel, um, you can see those two things. I had the Inspire command set to run every minute basically, as well as the Backup Run command, which is the spotty uh, Laravel backup package set to run every minute. And I was running that in the background and also I gave it a description like a a human-friendly description called Backup Database. So that's why on this one we just see that human-friendly description of what ran, and on this one we're seeing the actual, um, since I didn't give the Inspire command a description, we're seeing the full command that was actually executed on uh, my machine. All right, and so if we hop into here, um, we get, of course, the cron expression, what command, and we get the output of that scheduled job um, right here so we can check on it if we need to. If we go back and look at the Backup Database command, we get um, all of the output for that backup job, so we can take a look at it, make sure everything went well, and, um, and can come back and review it um, at a later time if we need to. All right, um, so that's kind of the scheduled uh, scheduler overview. Um, jumping down into jobs. Actually, before I go any further, I wanna go back to request for a second and look at something. Um, you can see right here that on this top uh, panel at the bottom, there's a tags uh, row that shows auth colon one. So tags are a kind of a cool part of Laravel Telescope where um, tags are automatically assigned to certain things. So in this case, the request came in since it was authenticated for user with an ID of one, it got automatically assigned this auth one tag. And what's cool is I can click on this tag and it searches up here in the request table for any entries in Telescope that have the auth one tag. So it lets me, filtered down into a certain user's request or a certain user's database queries or a certain user's jobs, things like that. So I can quickly look at it. Like if I get an email from a customer that says, hey, something went wrong or something's not working correctly, um, I can drill down into just their activity right here. And there's other tags uh, that Telescope adds, which I'll talk about here in just a second. All right, so uh, going back to jobs, um, this is of course where you would see your queued jobs. So do a lot of you use queued jobs in Laravel? Okay, so pretty popular uh, feature. And um, you, of course we have Laravel Horizon, which is a little bit more of a robust queued job management system than telescopes. Telescopes um, works across all drivers, however. So whereas Horizon is just for Redis and has, it's really more than just a UI. Horizon's like a job uh, load balancer and worker load balancer. And sort of, you could sort of combine Horizon and Telescope on the same application in many times if you're using Redis queues. But if you're using something like SQS or database queues, then Telescope will at least give you a, a kind of a rudimentary uh, UI around your queued jobs. All right, so I've got a route um, configured down here in my routes file. So in this job route, I can make this a little bigger for a second. 
I'm just going to find an eloquent model called a video, and I'm going to dispatch this render video um, queued job. I'm also going to dispatch a queued closure, which is an, a pretty new feature in Laravel 5.7, actually, um, that I'm not sure you, you may not be aware of. But you can queue this closure and have it run on the queue in the background. Um, that, clo that closure is going to queue kind of a sub job uh, when it's queued. And then um, I've got some other stuff, which I'll discuss in a second. So when I hit this route, we should see the render video job dispatch. We should see the closure dispatch. And then we should see another render video job dispatch from the closure. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to fire up a queue worker here in my um, console and hit this uh, job route. <coughs> Slash job. And we see those are pending, now they're processed, and they're, they're popped in that sub job um, there at the end. So we can see uh, the job that ran. If it's a closure, we can see that it was a closure. We can at least see what file and line that the closure was queued from, so we kind of know which uh, closure we're talking about. We can see the connection, uh, the queue connection, the queue's queue. Um, so in this case, I'm using the database queue and just the default queue name. Um, and if we jump down into this, uh, one of these jobs, again, we can see a lot of the same information from the index, but we also see these tags. Um, auth1, since I was authenticated as user uh, 1, uh, so we see that. And then we also see app video 1, that tag was also added. So if you've used Horizon, this tagging behavior works exactly the same as Horizon, where if a queued job has an eloquent model, like how we passed in that video into the queued job, it will automatically tag the job with that eloquent model's type and ID. And so what that let you do, lets you do again is click on that and filter out your jobs that had to do with that specific video uh, in your application. So it lets you kind of drill down and filter out some of the irrelevant uh, entries that you're not interested in. All right. Um, and um, if we jump into this closure, Kind of similar to the request uh, stuff we saw. Down here we can see other stuff that happened during this job. So in this case, some log entries were made. I can view those here. Those happened during the job. Looks like four database queries happened. Um, several of them have to do with just queuing the job itself, but we do see where it retrieved uh, the video that we passed in to the job. And um, you can see it even shows us the sub job that was fired from this job uh, right here on this tab. We can see that it did finish processing uh, successfully. Um, and we can jump into any of those and, and view them. All right, so um, that's kind of how the queued job stuff looks. Um, if you, if I stop this queue worker and uh, fire off some jobs, you just see them as pending um, at first, and then they should automatically update when the queue is um, running. So you can see they switched to process and the sub job was fired. All right. So that's sort of the uh, queued job overview. And I wanted to show you uh, the serializable closure thing. I wanted to explain it a little bit more, um, or queued closure thing, because it used to actually exist in Laravel. Does anyone remember when this was a feature of Laravel many years ago? OK, it used to exist in Laravel. I can't remember exactly which version, but back sometime in the Laravel four days. And it worked a little differently than it does now. It had some more limitations than it did now, or does now. And one of the problems back in the day when we allowed this was, um, kind of two things. Using eloquent models as like a use variable to a queued closure was kind of janky. It, it like would serialize the object and it wouldn't maintain some of the object's information. And um, it could be stale data um, because you're kind of serializing it permanently into the queue. So if it doesn't run for you know four or five minutes, then the data could be out of date. This actually works a little bit differently. We're using a different serializable closure library that I actually contributed to to make some of this possible um, in the past few weeks. So what happens is when you use a, an eloquent model now, or you use even an eloquent collection of models, it will kind of behave, behave the same way as regular queued class jobs, where it just stores a model identifier uh, with the queued job and then re-pulls it automatically when this, when this function is run, even though it's a use variable. It will actually serialize it as a model identifier, rehydrate it from the database, and then this will execute. So it's a little uh, <laughs> magical for sure, but pretty cool. And another limitation of the old queued closures was, um, I want to demonstrate it by actually serializing one for you. Um, so if I uncomment this, and then I'm just going to dump out uh, this closure. So I'm going to make a new serializable closure, and then just serialize it and dump it out on the screen so you can see what it looks like. All right. Um, so here's kind of how it comes out. 
And here at the end, you can see this hash that's added with the queued closure. And one of the kind of dangerous aspects of queuing closures in the past was if someone had access to your queue and was kind of malicious, they could modify this code because you can see the code is right here, like right in the uh, serialized closure. So they could actually modify this code while it's in your queue and then execute any code they wanted on your production server. So that would probably be a rare scenario, but it was sort of a concerning situation, you know, that something could be modified in transit or modified while it's stored. Um, if there's some security vulnerability. So we really didn't want to allow arbitrary code to just be running on your server where they could dump out your database, do whatever they wanted to. So how it works now is when this closure is serialized, it's actually stored with this hash, which is sort of a signature of the code that's contained within it. And have you used um, signed URLs in Laravel? Anyone? Okay, so a signed URL functions very much the same way. And so what happens is when we unserialize this closure, we can know if it's been tampered with since you serialized it. So it's actually 100% secure against uh, being modified while it's uh, stored in this queue. All right, so that was just a short uh, detour to explain kind of what's happening there. All right. Um, yeah, so moving on. Um, exceptions, so that's another tab here in Telescope. If we jump um, to this exceptions tab, um, I've got this route, of course, which you just saw that all it does is just throw an exception uh, that something went wrong. And let's see. All right, so there, there it is. And uh, of course, it shows up here. Uh, we can see the exception, the message. And if we come down in to inspect the ex exception, we can see the authenticated user. We can see the message. We can see the location within the code here. Um, we can also see, of course, the stack trace um, for the exception. And jumping back to request, if we look at that, we can see it had the 500 error there. And we can see down here the exception listed here as well. So if you drill into the request, you can scroll down, view the exception that happened, and then jump in to inspect it right there. All right, so what's nice is this is all persistent, you know, as you're using your application. If you want to look back, you know, 50 requests ago because you want to look at something, you can go back and do that. Um, so it's really nice. And uh, you can see right here when I'm viewing the exception, and this is probably, this is going to be true on other screens as well, I can view the request that actually triggered this exception. So if I'm coming through this index, I jump in here, I'm like, hmm, what request is this associated with? I can just jump straight to it from right there and see that exception. All right. And now you can see right here it has occurrences one. So if the same exception keeps happening multiple times, that's just going to keep incrementing. It's not going to show for the same exception. And how you can view the individual ones is by inspecting it. And then I can view the other occurrences of this exception right here. And I get a list of them and what user they're associated with. So that in the same way, if someone emails me and says, hey, I had this bug in your application, I can jump in here, go to the exceptions. Of course, they're also going to be tagged uh, with auth1. So I could filter them that way. And like if I do auth2, we don't have any. If I do auth1, we see the exceptions for that person. All right, so it's really quick to jump in and see what's gone wrong in your application. All right, um, so that's the exception overview screen. Uh, jumping down to logs, this is sort of a, a log viewer. Um, so we've already, as we've been demoing this, we've already accumulated some logs. Um, so I had some log statements in those queued jobs that were, you can see, running job for video one. We can see when it happened and um, some information about it. Um, so if we jump into that, um, we just get some context, the log information, and I've got a route here that should queue a, different, a few different types of logs. So you can see I've got the emergency logs, warning logs, notice logs, and if we jump into this notice log, if you look here, we were also passing some context into monologue, some additional information about the log uh, statement, and that should be available to us here as well. So I'll see the authenticated user. Again, I can jump into the request that triggered this log, see it right here. And I can see the context. Uh, there's the name and Taylor that was passed into the log. Um, so a nice little overview, a nice little simple log viewer. Um, it's a little nicer than kind of digging through your raw uh, text log files um, as you're building something. You could just stay on the screen, let it auto update, and kind of just dock it to the side and, um, and just keep an eye on things. All right. Um, Moving on here, uh, the dump screen. This is probably one of my favorite features of Laravel Telescope, actually, since I'm such a big fan of the dump function and DD and stuff like that. Um, so 
if I go to the dump screen um, and then I hit this route, you can see I've just got several dumps. Dump goodnight moon, dump a random string, dump a video, uh, an eloquent model to an array. And uh, let's see what happens here. So, let's see, telescope app test, dump. And we can see we get the nice dump information right here. And what's cool about this is it actually, it doesn't show up in the main browser window, similar to the dump console, because it knows that it, we're viewing it in telescope. So that's nice because you can dump multiple things and it doesn't affect the output of the actual application screen you're working on. It just shows up in here. And as we keep hitting it, these dumps keep showing up here and we can just see our debug information right there live. We can see uh, the requests and we can jump into the request actually as well and uh, when it happened. All right, and what's, what I also really like about this is, for example, if I come off this screen and now I'm viewing something else, ideally I would want my dumps to start showing up in my browser again because I'm not viewing them in telescope and that's exactly what happens. So it's in... <laughs> so it's really convenient, you know, if you're viewing the dump screen, it just works as you would expect. Um, you know, it shows up in the dump screen. If you're not viewing the dump screen, it shows up in your browser. It just works exactly how it should. Um, so that's really cool. Um, you can just kind of dock that again to the side as you're working on your app, kind of keep an eye on the dumps that are coming through, and you don't really have them messing up your, your app layout or whatever, showing up at the top of the screen. So a much nicer way to interact with the dump function, which of course is like IQ level 2000 debugging, uh, way better than a, a real debugger. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let's see. You know, speaking of uh, Good Night Moon, one cool thing we wanted to do was um, Mojave, you know, came out with a, a dark mode um, for um, the operating system. So we kind of felt like we didn't want to left, be left behind there. So I'm going to call Telescope Night, kind of switch into a dark <laughs> mode. <laughs> uh, which is pretty nice. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I can't decide which one is my favorite, really. I kind of go back and forth. All right, so um, that's the dump screen. Uh, queries. Again, we've kind of accumulated uh, quite a few queries as we've been demoing this, but you can see them all right here, how long they took, when they occurred. Um, I can jump in here, view the query, um, the request, all that good stuff you would expect. Kind of get a nice formatted display of the query. So if it's a pretty gnarly query, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, it's not just kind of one long str uh, string. Um, one thing I wanted to show you about queries is you can actually set a query threshold for what's, what's considered a slow query uh, in your application. So if I go to my telescope configuration file and config telescope, and I go down to this query watcher, um, I can set how many milliseconds is considered a slow query in my application. So for the, our purposes, I'm just going to set it to one and um, go ahead and hit that query route. And you can see that duration is highlighted there in red. And I believe it's also actually tagged as slow. So if you just search slow, uh, you can see your slow queries right there. And we can jump into that and take a look at the query. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the basic overview of queries. That's kind of all there is to it. Uh, models. So eloquent models fire events um, as they're updated, as they're created. And in this route, I, I create a model using just the model factory. Then I'm going to find it and update the name on it and save it again. All right, so if I hit this route, you can see that I created this app video with an ID of 11. It looks like I was actually repulling at video one. Um, but we can see that was created, and we see this model was updated. If we go in here, we can see, um, again, it's tagged with what uh, model it's actually related to, who did it, and we can see the changes that were made to the model. We can see that the name was updated just to a random string, and we can see the updated at timestamp was also changed. Uh, so we can hop in here and quickly view, you know, what exactly changed on this model during this request. And I think similarly, if we hop into the request, I can see all the queries. Several of them were slow because um, we set it to one millisecond. I can see what models were updated during this request. Uh, so really nice. I mean, if you jump into any request, you get a really nice overview of what exactly happened during that request. 
Um, all right, so that's uh, models, events. So it looks like the spotty package actually fired a few events uh, back um, 18 minutes ago. And we can see kind of what events were fired. I'm also going to fire another event here. Um, so I've got this video rendered event. I'm just going to dispatch with a video. Um, so let's call this route. All right, and there's our event. And um, you can see it had one listener. So if we hop in here, of course, this is also tagged. We can view, so we can search our events by you know, certain models that were associated with those events. Um, we can view the request. So we hop into the request. We can see that event was fired right there. And we can see app video one. And we can also see what listeners. Uh, we can, so we see the send video rendered notification handle method was one of our listeners. That we also see that that was a queued listener. Um, there, so that if we ran our queue, we would expect that uh, process. All right, now some events are broadcast. Um, event broadcasting is a feature of Laravel that lets you sort of have a real-time updating uh, UI through either Redis or uh, Pusher.com. So if we mark this video rendered event as broad or should broadcast, implement should broadcast, and let's just fire that again. And you can see that it shows us which events were broadcast here on this listing as well. Um, so that's really nice. All right, so that's um, an overview of the event screen. Jumping down to the mail screen. Huh, I guess Spotty sent an email. I didn't know that. Um, so that there's one email. I have another one I'm going to fire here. Um, so if I go to my mail screen, I've just got a basic email. I'm going to mail to myself, uh, send new invoice paid email. And right now I've got my email driver configured as um, just the log driver, so it's not actually using any service. So let's go ahead and hit this route and see uh, kind of what happens here. All right, there it is. Um, looks like this was queued, so I may need to go ahead and run this uh, queue worker. Oh, it's already running. All right, so we see uh, our mailable class invoice paid. We can see the subject right there, how many recipients it's had. And what's nice is if, you know, some of you may have used um, MailHog or MailTrap in the past, but you actually get a nice overview of your email right there in the debugger. You can see the subject. You can even download the raw email file for that email, and then you can open it up, you know, right in your client there and um, view the email in Apple Mail or whatever you want. Kind of take a look at how it looks. So really nice uh, for working with email. All right. Um, so that's the email screen. Uh, notifications. We can see all the notifications that were fired. Notifications, of course, can be email, or they could be SMS or Slack messages or something like that. Um, so. In this notification route, I'm going to find a user. I'm going to do the video rendered notification, which I believe is mainly just a mail notification uh, for that video. All right, so let's go ahead and call that route. All righty, there's that notification. Looks like it's processed. And this was a mail uh, notification. Now, if we jump in here, um, you don't really get a preview on the notification screen. Some of them are not really previewable, like if they're Slack notifications. But since this was a mail notification, it actually will show up in our mail um, listing. We can see that app notifications video rendered. And we do get the preview of that notification here. Um, so if it's a mail notification, you'll, you'll see it on the mail um, listing. All right, so in the same way, you can view uh, your notification, take a look, download the email file, whatever you need to do. Um, yeah, and we can see those have also been showing up in our queued job listing. We see that notification. We can see that mail. We can see that they're processed. Um, so all of that works the same. They're tagged um, like you would expect. So you can view them there as well. Um, similarly with the request, we can jump down here. Um, since this notification was queued, we see it under the jobs listing. There's our queued notification. And we can see that it was processed. So. Can access, you can view it in a few different screens. All right. Um, moving on, uh, the cache screen. So the cache screen is a pretty simple screen that just shows you um, cache hits and misses, um, updates, things like that. So if I hit that route, it 
we can see that we had a miss. We updated a, a cache uh, with the key of name. We updated it to Taylor. Uh, it expires in 180 minutes. Again, we can view the request and see all the cache operations for that request, uh, which is pretty nice, and jump into any of them. So this is kind of useful if you're, you can see kind of where your cache misses are, if you're seeing more than you expect or, or whatever. You can get a nice overview of what's going on there. All right, Redis, um, pretty similar to the cache uh, display. This route is just making a few Redis uh, commands. I'm going to set a Redis variable called name, and then I'm going to retrieve it. Um, just really simple stuff. But if we look at the Redis screen, we can see those commands that ran, how long they took, uh, when they happened, um, and again, view the request that initiated them. And on the request screen, we can see the list of Redis commands that ran for that request. Uh, so a lot of information, really, about what's going on in your application. All right. So authorization. So uh, Telescope can, is probably primarily uh, going to be used by you in local development on your machine you know, as you're building your level application. You can also ship it into production. You can authorize who can access it and uh, do some other things, which I'll talk about. So authorization works um, extremely similarly to Horizon or Nova, where um, you can have, by default, kind of either a list of emails down here in my telescope service provider of people that should access telescope. You can also have it like on a policy. So it uses the view telescope uh, gate. So if I have a user policy and a view telescope method on that policy, I can authorize it from here. So in local environments, it's always authorized to true. But it, like if I set this to false and then set my environment to production, I can't access um, telescope anymore. So it's really simple to you know, control who can access telescope and when. All right. Um, filtering. So if you were to ship this um, into production, we're going to use it for some things. You probably don't want to store every single thing that happens in your application because that would be a lot of data, you know, a lot of queries, a lot of events. You may just want to store um, certain things, maybe certain types of things like maybe just exceptions, just failed jobs. You're not really interested in every single request. So you, in your telescope service provider, there's a call to telescope filter, which takes a callback. And it receives an incoming telescope entry. And you just return true or false on if you want to keep this entry or not. So you can see in the local environment, it's just keeping everything, because that's probably what you want. Um, if it's not local, we're only keeping it by default if it's a reportable exception. So what that means is, it's an exception that is not listed in the don't report array of your exception handler. So uh, by default, that usually excludes things like 404 exceptions and things like that. Or we'll log it if there's a failed job or it's a scheduled task, because you really usually want to monitor those in production. Or it has a monitored tag, which I'll show you um, in just a second. So like if, you know, if I return false here, and we're still in the production environment, and we really shouldn't be logging anything. So if I go back here to the request and I just keep hitting this, you can see none of that's being logged. So the filter lets you control what exactly you're storing. Now, sometimes you may want to um, store things that you wouldn't normally store, like maybe a request, only if it has a tag that you're actively interested in. So for example, a certain user has emailed you and uh, they say they're having some problems, and you just want to keep an eye on their activity for a day or so. What you would do is um, come in here to this little radar-looking button, and right here I can monitor a tag, so maybe auth1. I'm only interested in user1. I'm going to save that, so I'm monitoring this tag now. And now, even in production, um, we wouldn't normally be logging requests. We'd usually only be logging exceptions or failed jobs. But if I hit this you know, this very basic route of just a simple request authenticated as user one, we should still see it here because we're monitoring it. And we do. So this lets us control, you know, exactly what we want to store because you would, I think, quickly overwhelm yourself if you stored everything in production. So 
usually if it were me, I would probably only be logging like, you know, <laughs> failed jobs or exceptions. And then I would just monitor things as needed uh, with certain tags, either a certain model's ID, a certain user's ID. And then when I'm done monitoring that tag, or I've gathered the information I need. Uh, maybe I asked them to try something again. I gathered the information. Then I can stop monitoring that tag right there and, and stop storing it. <clears throat> so that's, again, that's very similar to how Horizon works if you've used Laravel Horizon. And if you're using Redis queues, I really encourage you to check out Laravel Horizon and kind of maybe pair it with Telescope as well. All right, so um, that's kind of how monitoring and filtering works. Yeah, so uh, Telescope, um, as Michael said, it's actually been done for a few weeks. Uh, Mohammed and I have been working on it. And uh, I think I'll, we'll probably release it probably next week. Um, open source on GitHub, you know, totally free for you to use and play with. And um, yeah. <laughs>